And we're underway in the Chatham Cup final. Thank you for joining us here on Sky Sport next as we get this game underway. Miramar Rangers in the white. They're trying to win the cup for the fifth time. And Kashmir Technical trying to win it for the third time. So straight away, Kashmir Technical on the attack. Now it settles it down here through Corey Mitchell. Several plays, a nice ball, and here's an early chance for Kashmir Technical, and it's cleared off the line pretty much by Miramar. Yeah, great start by, by Technical. Corey Mitchell and Angus Fraser doing really well for Kashmir Tech in the opening stages here, really putting pressure on Miramar. Some gaps at the back on that right-hand side already for Miramar Rangers. The wind will play a, feet, a, 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 a part in this game. There's no question about that. As Syme settles it down now for Rangers and Midgley. We'll try and move it for Del Hommel, the French player. Saw him regularly through the South Central Series. Now that wind is quite strong at Miramar's back, isn't it, Harry? That was a little nudge forward there, and it went forward comfortably by 40 metres. This is Midgley. In the first 90 seconds, Flynn O'Brien. He's wearing 16 for Rangers, so a bit of a scrappy couple of minutes so far. But this game will be willing. This is Coglin. Coglin being left alone a little bit. Still in possession for Kashmir Technical. As Fraser tries to win the ball, Fraser Angus. It's a good start here for Kashmir Technical. Yeah, they've uh, put uh, Miramar under some pressure early on. Miramar looking a bit rattled. Just uh, still finding their feet and trying to get settled. Well, very good season for Miramar Rangers. Last year, of course, winning that South Central Series. 7-2, wasn't it, over Wellington Olympic in that final? The Cashmere Technical certainly did perform pretty well. They played five games in that South Central Series, and they won three of them. Well, they're far from the worst team. And we're right on the hunt towards the end of the round robin competition before the final was played. Here they come again, Kashmir Technical, and Ford's got it there for Miramar Rangers, the new keeper. Newkling looking to really use that wind to as an advantage. <laughs> he overcooked that one. So tongue to take the throw in. To Gucci, it is up front there for Kashmir Technical, the Japanese player. Miramara back in possession through Flynn O'Brien. Mason Smith. Midgley, nicely and closely marked there by Corey Mitchell, very experienced player, 27 years of age. Played over 100 games in the New Zealand Premiership before. That was disbanded about this time last year. Angus. Shriver's playing it forward, but he isn't able to pick up a teammate, but Dew has got the loose ball here for Miramar. O'Brien and Shrivers once more. Yeah, Miramar be looking to get Sam Dewar on the ball as much as possible. Sort of anchors that uh, Miramar midfield with you know, the other one in, in, in number seven. They're just out of picture. Owen Barnett was a, is a lively character as well. Scored some nice goals last uh, in the South Central series. Owen Barnett, Ollie, no Ollie White, as we alluded to earlier, so 
those two were pretty much the attacking threats of Sam Mason Smith in that series for uh, for Miramar Rangers. Well, that was Wood playing it forward, and now here comes the old campaigner, Tom Schwartz, and Danny Knight getting themselves in a little bit of a pickle at the back there. Yeah, that wind is quite elusive, isn't it? Um, seen early on that ball up to Sam Mason Smith. That ball from um, from Ryan Ford out to uh, Liam Wood, just over hit. Yeah, it's going to take some adjustment, that is for sure. And this is, uh, I guess, too, with the game being played before the season starts in a few weeks, Harry, there'll be a bit of rust there, won't there, coming off the yeah, summer look, break? I, I, th I think you know, pre-season is always quite a difficult one. You've got to get, I mean, as Scott Hales said before, you know, the Hilton Batoni Cup, they've played a couple of games. Uh, any, any games are good games uh, from a training perspective, isn't it? 90 minutes under the belt or, or, a, bit, or a bit more if you're, um, you're playing a couple of games a week internal as well um, into club games. Nothing beats uh, 90 minutes on the pitch in terms of pre-season. Well, of course, uh, Kashmir Technical are the defending champions in the mainland Premier League and the Southern League as well. So, good, very good season for them last year. And they'll, of course, be hoping to replicate that in 2022. And then hopefully we'll have a full National League at the end of the year again. Yeah, let's hope so. With Auckland teams playing in it. Yeah, a lot of football this year, both from a, on the domestic front end, from an international perspective as well. Glenn with uh, the All Whites at a World Cup qualifiers uh, this month, actually, later on this month. No handball, it's play on. Miramar coming forward here. Yes, you're right, looking forward to those games for sure. And then, of course, the World Cup itself coming later in the year. Wood for Miramar. Nudging it forward. Mason Smith chasing it through. Danny Knight way off or out of his area there. But he's a good keeper, Danny Knight. Very experienced player. Up again by Cashmere Technical. That was Angus trying to forward. Here he comes again, Fergus Angus. Good move upfield here by him. Keeps his run forward as well. Coglin. Well, he's a good player, Coglin. Leading scorer for Cashmere Technical last year. Yeah, I think he scored 10 goals in the uh, this this competition, Chatham Cup competition. Quality player, leads the line really well, got a nose for goal. Smart player as well. he yeah, got some experience behind him as, as well. As Miramar through Shrivers. Could be an awkward one here for the Kashmir technical defence, but not. It wasn't in the end, however. You do have a free kick. Store is going to leave it for night. Well, one there by Kashmir Technical. It's a good ball. Flag staying down here. Wood. Oh, no, the flag's gone up now. Coglin just in that offside position. Yeah, those are the lines that. Gavin Coughlin can can make just in behind or off the shoulders of defenders. Just overran that one, drifted to an offside position, but you can already see trying to sort of take advantage of that, of that space in behind. Taylor Shrivers, Flynn O'Brien and Liam Wood. They do play a high line at times, Miramar. They do like to push up quite a bit. So it does leave them a bit of space in behind. 
Bit of combination of passing here from Miramar Rangers. Barnett. Nice turn by Mason Smith. He's been quite deep, isn't he? Into the area it comes, and Storer. Well, he wanted it to go over the byline, didn't he? Took no risks in the end. There's a chance or not on target there from Midgley. And in the end, no risks taken by Stora, who got it out of there, and it's a corner. Yeah, didn't know whether there was a bit of a... You know, Midgley got a bit of wind there that perhaps made it a bit more uncomfortable with that header. Be interesting to see it again, but it was a free header in the box there for Scott Midgley. Del Homel with the, with the corner. For Miramar Rangers. Oh, Knight's not got it. But in the end, fortunately for Kashmir Technical, it fell to one of their players. It's an interesting one, isn't it, Glenn? Do, do, do keepers come and punch that? I think he's tried to obviously try to catch it, but in swinging corner from the right hand side from Del Hummel put him under pressure. Oh, that wind, remember, is blowing at the backs of Miramar Rangers in this first half. This is going to fall. It's still there for Miramar Rangers, and it's just wide and Kashmir technical. Breathe a sigh of relief. Well, Danny Knight here. Here he is. He was in the Chatham Cup winning side for Kashmir Technical in 2013 and 14. Uh, he would love to lift that trophy for a third time, I am sure. Miramar last winning the cup in 2010. So 12 years between drinks for Miramar Rangers. Coglin taking a what appears to be a rather minor knock. minutes so far in this Chatham Cup final here is a good run coming forward here from Angus he's made a very good start now what's happened here might just be an offside play but maybe Angus Harry after the ball he was a, a slight Issue? I couldn't really see an issue there at all, Glenn, so... Perhaps it was a little bit of a shirt pull or untoward there between the two players. Kashmir have made a pretty good start so far. It's been fairly even First to 13 to 14 minutes is Shrivers. Just gives position back to Kashmir Technical and they like they want to just play with a bit higher intensity, a bit more pace about their play at the moment than perhaps Miramar. Yeah, Miramar, usually if you see them last year, I mean, I know it's pre-season for, for both both these uh, these clubs at the moment, but uh, yeah, Miramar last season looked very cohesive in the middle of the park. Well, yeah, just still trying to find their feet at the moment, I think. Well, the timing on that challenge coming in from Dewar. So there's the captain getting a yellow card for Miramar Rangers, Sam Dewar. And to be fair, it was a bit of a late and lazy challenge, wasn't it? So first yellow card in the 15th minute. Well, the 
player fouled was Luke Tung. Playing in that defensive line, Luke Tung. Seems to have been around forever, Luke Tung. He's still only 23. <laughs> Uh, played uh, in the Phoenix Reserves for several seasons before moving south to Canterbury United in 2018. So Stora with the free kick. Liking the intent of Kashmir Technical so far though, Ari, they've uh, started this game with nice urgency. So we see Shriver's miss, miss kick that clearance. To Gucci it is in there. Well, Yaguchi is trying to get the ball there. Stora will try again for Kashmir. And now it's cut out. And Miramar can sweep forward here on the break. Barnett. Zeb. You can see Miramar still like to be patient and composed. Kashmir, on the other hand, like to get the ball forward quickly. They've already caught uh, Miramar on a couple of occasions in the, in the first 15 minutes out in, in wide areas too. I'd be interesting to see the stats on crossing from Kashmir side. Two or three already from the, the right, a couple from the left in the opening five minutes as well. So, yeah, Miramar looking to, to really solidify, get hold of the ball, control the tempo. Kashmir quite happy to, to, to play on the break, absorb, absorb the pressure. And when they do get the opportunities, he likes a Taguchi in the middle. Obviously Coughlin we've seen up front. He likes a Mitchell and Angus too, supporting from wide areas. A bit more time on the ball here for Miramar in this possession is Zeb. Settles it back here for Del Homel. Easily cut out there, that pass not finding the target at all. And that was Mitchell winning it for Coglin. Good ball here as Kashmir Technical sweep forward here. Richard back to Coglin. Coglin has a crack and it's not on target. But still again, their transition plays good. Yeah, very good, isn't it? Um, two or three passes, particularly in the midfield. And they're getting into those wide areas again. Confronting Liam Wood on one side, Flynn O'Brien on the other. Well, I know Scott Hale said they played a couple of games in that local competition. But Kashmir Technical in these first 80 minutes, they look like they played a semi-final against Western <laughs> Suburbs, don't they? And of course, uh, Miramar didn't play that semi-final two weeks ago. That's right. See if that that period or that uh, trend continues for the rest of the game as Shrivers goes long again. And is that a, a win for Kashmir Technicals off the oh, ball look, play? Oh, look, I think yeah, forcing um, you know the likes of Shrivers or Flynn O'Brien or Liam, we're going forcing them to go long is a you know it will work in favour of of Kashmir. Particularly with them in behind, we've seen how you know how that ball sort of gains gains some legs over the over the goal line there. This is definitely the wind going from left to right on the, on the screens this afternoon. And Cash may be quite content if Miramar are, you know, are having to, to to go more direct. Ford hurried into clearing the ball by Taguchi. And that might have just come off that Kashmir technical player. So maybe Miramar a little fortunate that time to keep the ball. These Kashmir technical players have been busy so far. Without really creating any meaningful chances just yet. Berg just having a chat there to Hugo Dalhamol. So a free kick here for Kashmir. Tongue's going to come over and take it.
Is this one going to fall? Stora was lurking there at the far post. Barnett. One of the fastest players in this Miramar Rangers team. Nice skills by Del Homel. Symes, it is now in possession. Mason Smith, quite opening. He hasn't had much time with the ball at his feet so far. Yeah, look at the yellow shirts oh. behind the ball as well. All, you know, very compact. Yeah, Miramar just have to be patient and use their width, I think, because they're, you know, Kashmir are quite congested in the middle of the park, forcing Miramar to, to get the ball wide. Which is what they've done now. Wood tries to feed Mason Smith again. Again, there goes that busy off the ball hustle from Kashmir Technical and they've won the ball back again. Coglin. The Irishman comes forward here. Oh, no one there at the far post. Well, Coglin did all the hard work and he, all it needed did. was someone there. Yeah, nice work from Coughlin. Yeah, Scott Howells won't be happy there how, how easy he, he ran through the midfield of, of Miramar. Tung goes direct up the middle. Well won by Dewar for Miramar. And now Harris Seb, originally from the Canterbury region. Yeah, that's a good work bomb from... Jacob Richards too. He 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 made a challenge on halfway, got back and forced Ollie um, Owen Barnett to play play back instead of forward. So they are hustling very well, Kashmir in that in the middle of the park. They're really disrupting the, the ball movement from Miramar that they've become so accustomed to. Well Shrivers, senior player in this team, will be happy to call. It down at the back as Wood tries to find Barnett. Can't find him and it's cut out again by Kashmir Technical. Here goes Coglin who's showing out nicely. Good ball to Taguchi. He's chasing through. Tung tries to find Coglin as he measured that pass. He can't quite time it. Well, that uh, deserved, a, deserved a shot there. In fact, it was Matheson who was involved, the South African player. So forward with this goal kick, coming up to the halfway mark of the first half. Hope you're enjoying the coverage here between Miramar Rangers and Cashmere Technical with the Chatham Cup final for 2021. Better get that right, Harry. It's going to be a strange year with the Chatham Cup up for grabs again later in the year. Well, it was good work from Shrivers to keep the ball in play, but Schwartz has it for Kashmir Technical. Oh, Matheson through here. Oh, nice footwork by the South African. Coughlin still has a chance here for Kashmir Technical. Still in the field of play. Coughlin getting some support here from Boys. And he's overcooked that one, but it's still there. Richards. And at the near post, Ford's got it. And he has it for Miramar Rangers. Good period of play for Kashmir Technical. Yeah, good good series of a uh, of, of bit of pressure there from Kashmir Technical. See Jacob Richards there. What a, I think it was a save. What was it off the post? Couldn't see from, from the angle. Nonetheless, good pressure from Kashmir Technical. Lyle Matheson too getting in behind on a couple of occasions there. Yeah, just, just couldn't find enough space. And you can see on his left foot trying to cut back onto his right and just didn't get enough room to, and to pull the trigger. Well, Kashmir Technical certainly look like the better of the two teams at the moment. They look just more in sync in these first uh, 25 minutes. And their passing's been more accurate as well. Oh, some fancy footwork there from Taguchi. Taguchi, and it's cut out for a corner. That was building nicely for Kashmir Technical again. Yeah, some great work from uh, Taguchi. 
And again, across from the right-hand side, in behind Liam Wood. On that side for, uh, for Miramar. Well, Matheson's going to take this free kick, or rather this corner. Schwartz it is, and you know how close and how effective he is from corners. Scored a lot of goals, but that one couldn't quite get the power or the timing on it. Good goal kick there from Ford. Midgley's onto it here for Miramar, but again, some industrious play off the ball from Kashmir Technical. Another free kick they've won. Symes just a little over eager to try and win the ball back. Knight it is with this free kick. Well, this, uh, yeah, it's a free kick as he plays it forward again. Well, Miramar back in position now is Barnett. plays it forward but again his pass doesn't find a teammate you're thinking Miramar should do in those situations their short passing game hasn't really been too effective so far well I, th I think previous um, previous games have been you know been quite patient you know haven't been able to that was a forced pass there on that left hand side now whether it's a miscommunication of a run but yeah, historically they they haven't been they haven't you know uh, I suppose pressured themselves to play the ball forward. They've been quite patient and quite diligent, um, quite measured with their passing uh, previously. But again, as we said, pre-season um, uh, is still getting to to know each other. The season starts in I think three weeks' time, so um, still a lot of work to do. But I'm I'm sure you know they've got quality in this in this squad. Don't forget we've got Joel Moriera, you've got Andy Bevan, Max Falcon are on the bench, so. Um, some quality players there too. Here's Joao Morieta. Offside is Richards. Yeah, Joao Morieta putting the boots on for another season. Kashmir Technicals bench is fairly young. Got a couple of exciting teenagers there. Yusuf Van Dam and Kian Donkers and Alex Ballard as well. Mitchley dispossess a good challenge coming in there from Corey Mitchell for Kashmir Technical. Now Richard switching out to the left. And Matheson's picked up the loose ball for Kashmir Technical. Angus. Matheson. Passing again is good from Kashmir Technical. Well, good day here at Porirua. That wind blowing behind the backs of Miramar Rangers in the white here in the Chatham Cup final. Forward is pressured. Into turning over position once again. Tang. Away by Schreiber's. Tall defender, of course, and the Central defence. It's a nice play from Richards. This is Boys with the run. Experienced Englishman. And did that come off Del Hommel? It did. So it's going to be a corner. Oh, 
Oh, can Miramar get organised here? Schwartz coming forward again. One goal he scored in the South Central Series to Gucci to take this corner. Here's the far post and it's a push on a Miramar player. It's going to be possession for Rangers. Well, winning that number one nicely here for Midgley. Again, Midgley's pass. Not accurate enough. Oh, Stora made a bit of a mess of that one. Nicely recovered there from Luke Tung. Thirteen minutes out from half time. Scott Hales over the far side there. He's, fe he's feeling. I'd be overly happy. It's, I would have look, thought. And, and again, you can't expect too much, right? In pre-season, um, but it is a cup final as well. At the same time, let's not uh, let's not not get away from that. This is a, a cup final. There's a trophy up for grabs this afternoon. Well, the other thing too is Miramar were. Scoring goals for fun pretty much in that South Central series last year. And they haven't even really looked likely at all in no, this game so far. It's, it's Kashmir definitely in the, the opening 30-odd minutes that uh, really put pressure on Miramar. No clear-cut chances. We saw the one from, from uh, Jacob Richards earlier, about five minutes ago. But um, they've, more, they've looked the more likely. They've looked the more, you know, they've, they've used the ball more wisely or more diligently. Um, yeah, there's, there's more intensity to the way that uh, that Kashmir have been playing. But of course, Kashmir Technical haven't put the ball in the back of the net. And there's a foul from Kashmir Technical. And uh, referee Berg is going to come back for that incident. Corey Mitchell it is. So Wood, now Hommel. Mitchley, not able to be linking up with a teammate there, but Boy's under a touch pressure. And he turns over the position now to Hommel. Mitchley. Matheson, good ball to Gucci. Nice turn and pass there. Here comes Richards coming forward here for Kashmir Technical and Ford. Fists are clear. Yeah, great uh, transition from, from left back here out to the, the right-hand side and it ended up with Jacob Richards. Nice strike on target as well for Kashmir Technical. Again, that... that that link play to Gucci in there with a basic what was a, a no look pass. Yeah, it was a beautiful pass. So Lyle Matheson over to take the corner again. Symes to clear for Miramar. Here's Matheson sweeping forward again here for Catch Me Technical. And has that come off a Miramar Rangers player for another corner? Yes. Yeah, I think it came off the, the chest of Taylor Shrivers there. How many of those Glenn have we seen hit hit the arm in, in that sort of area in the when the players are running into the box? Here's Matheson with the corner. He'll get another opportunity. Nice control from him. And Matheson's going for the far post, and did that clip a Miramar player? I think it might have. Yes, Shrivers and Midgley. One of those two has conceded yet another corner. 
Well, they really do have the presence in the middle of defence there. Those two players, Storer and Schwartz in particular, to really put pressure on the Miramar defence from set pieces. Yuya Taguchi to take the corner. And nicely gathered there by Ryan Ford, Miramar's keeper. Luke Tung back defending for Kashmir. And Miramar after a sustained period of time on defence now swing forward here but in space in midfield for Owen Barnett Midgley space here he can unleash a shot Schwartz well that could have deflected anywhere and for the first time after 36 minutes just a bit slow to get back in defence there they, were uh, Kashmir they technical. were weren't they I think um, I'd love to see more from Owen Barnett he's certainly got the the pace and, and the skill to, to run at players so I'm sure Scott Hales will be looking trying to get the board through to, through to him on uh, on more occasions than they have done in the first half so far yeah Barnett an exciting young player he's just 20 big feature of this team last year 28 games for Miramar Rangers in 2021 that's a nice touch, nice touch from Taguchi wasn't, wasn't it oh and the pass from Coglin not required or wasn't good enough there Richards would have been wide open however here come Miramar no foul referee's happy with that challenge and now here is space for Taguchi again his passing's been spot on so far this is Tung coming forward Coughlin oh he gets it back here's a big chance for Coughlin oh and it's saved by Ford Best chance of the game. What a great touch there from, I think, what if you from Lyle, Lyle Matheson. Let's see, have, I couldn't see from that uh, couple of, uh, couple of phases before. But, you know, Daniel Boys was a bit slow coming on this left-hand side when Jacob Richards had the ball. I had to go more direct, and it was a fantastic touch to put Coglin in. They've looked sharp in and around the box, haven't they? This afternoon, Cashmere, Jacob Richards, right, Richard, sorry, Long Matheson's got behind. Coughlin on a couple of occasions as well. So, Taguchi once again with this corner. And he'll get another crack. short this time to go cheaper more angle on this one flick to the far post and it's going to be a goal kick well anxious times for Miramar in this game but they've still got through and that flick, flick header wasn't far away from Andrew Storer Anything played in with pace across the front of the goal. Deflection, whether it's, a, a, as you said, from Storer or if it's from a white shirt as well. If it's delivered with pace, it, it can cause the, both the keeper and the defence some problems. Well, turned over easily again in midfield by Miramar Rangers. And now Matheson's got on the ball here again. Boys makes a run from left back. Yeah, Miramar's defence deep has been pretty solid. Good ball there. And here they come again. It's Richards sweeping oh. in and it's cleared away by Miramar again. They just needed someone running across that near post, didn't they, on that occasion. But great work down the right-hand side from Kashmir. Well, tongues coming forward. Richards sweeping yeah. forward. They're looking good, these Kashmir technical players. I think Scott Howes won't be happy with this. I mean, these yellow shirts running past white shirts willy-nilly at the moment, the last five minutes. Well, you wonder about the fitness levels too, Harry, don't you? This early in the season. 
Maybe half-time can't come soon enough for Miramar Rangers. You even got Tom Schwartz now over halfway, so you know he wants to get in on the on the act as well. Always oh, used as a decoy there. Coglin sneaking through again. Oh, beautifully kept in field. Here comes a shot, penalty. and it's a penalty, is it? It's a penalty. Well, it was beautifully saved by Ryan Ford, the keeper. But I think referee Berg has picked up an incident just before the shot was unleashed. Let's have a look, Glenn. Great work from Coughlin again. As we said, Schwartz in there as well. Well, Glenn? we saw a player go down there, didn't we? I think it was, uh, it was Jacob Richards, I think, that we actually went down. No, no surprises there. Coughlin will be the, uh, the penalty taker. So here he is, the Irishman, to take the, the penalty for Kashmir Technical. If he can convert this penalty, it will be a deserved lead for Kashmir Technical. And it is. Kashmir Technical take the lead in the Chatham Cup final. <laughs> And it's one goal to nil to the Canterbury team. Oh, makes me nervous when I see strikers just sort of walk a little a bit. A bit of a faint in that last step. Glenn put you off, did it? I think I put the keeper <laughs> off as well. Well, that was a, a yeah, an experienced penalty taker. Absolutely. A very good player. So he gets the goal and gives... His team the lead. He scored seven goals in six games in the Southern League last year. He was the team's top scorer in the South Central Series too. And that's a deserved lead, Harry, lead, yeah, uh, lead Harry isn't it? Absolutely. They, they deserve that lead from the, the pressure they've put on Miramar. Hey, I, I, and I think uh, we alluded to it at the top of the show, that, that transition where you know Miramar being quite content to keep the ball and try and control the tempo, but they haven't used it. You know, they've been sloppy in their position. They've let players run past them. And here we go again, yellow shirts pushing forward. You've seen Dan Schwartz and that, that, uh, the lead, lead up to that, that penalty there inside the box. So, um, yeah, Miramar, a lot of work to do. Yeah, they're really lacking urgency and crispness in their play at the moment. The South Central League champions from last year. Well, two minutes out from half time, and you're going to have a couple of minutes of added time as well. It's about uh, just over three minutes to play until half time. Stora will feed it back to Danny Knight. Who, other than those couple of corners in the early part of the game, has had very little to do. Yep, yeah, that's right. We saw that, that I mean, was it about five, seven, eight minutes ago, that shot from Scott Midgley on the, on, the, on the edge of the box was the first real chance on goal they had. It was a block shot, but I think it was 35 minutes or something like that. So, Well, let's see if Symes can do something here. Nice challenge from Stora. Has won the ball back. And here comes Matheson, who's been one of the players of the first half. Coglin, Matheson and Taguchi have been going great. Matheson still in the with possession here. Coglin can have a shot. Oh, and it's deflected just wide. Miramar's defence again under severe pressure. What about the pace from Lyle Matheson there? Great composure too to, to keep his balance and, and poise and, and awareness to, to lay the ball in for Coughlin. Coglin, so I'm sorry. Here's the nicely controlled here by Harris Seb. But again, Sam Mason Smith, who's basically been a spectator in this yeah, first half. They haven't got him into the game at all, have they? They've been turning the ball over far too much as well, Glenn, haven't they? You know, one or two, one or two passes and they turn the ball over. 
which is which is not the way Miramar play football. But you got to give credit to to Kashmir in particular in the middle of the park. They've they've been busy. They've been intense. They've been decisive with the the way they've you know they've come out and attacked this Miramar side in in the first half, getting the ball out wide. Matheson on one side. See Jacob Richards on the other. Very industrious players. Nice ball from Symes. Del Homel. Looking to link up again and he couldn't time that one. The Frenchman. So just one minute left in this first half of the Chatham Cup final. And it's all looking good so far for Kashmir Technical. Remember, really trying to win this title for the third time in eight years. That would be some achievement. and can't keep that in the field of play. And here goes Taguchi making a nuisance of himself. Schreiber's coming forward here, looking to inject something into this Miramar Rangers performance in this first half. Midgley. Schreiber's back in his central defending position again now. Mason Smith, Symes, dishes it off. Midgley. And again, all those yellow shirts behind the ball. And there's going to be a free kick awarded to Kashmir Technical by referee Berg. Just a little late challenge it looked like going in there from one of the Miramar Rangers players. Matheson keeps it in nicely. And there it is, half time here in the Chatham Cup final and it's all good for the team in the yellow and the blue from Christchurch. Kashmir Technical leading Miramar Rangers at half time courtesy of that penalty to Coglin in the 41st minute and they lead one goal to nil. Well a lot for Miramar to Get sorted in the second half. Absolutely no doubt about it. And I think there's going to be some fairly stern words from Scott Hales at half time. However, I don't think the players <laughs> are going to be surprised to hear something like that because uh, they have been outplayed in this first half. But the good sign for Miramar is that they're only down by a single goal. It is Kashmir technical leading by one goal to nil at half time. Well, at halftime, we can uh, reflect on a, uh, a couple of other things happening in football. Here are the semi-final results of the Kate Shepherd Cup. Hamilton Wanderers, too good for Coastal Spirit and Christchurch. And Wellington United, of course, they're a very good team from the capital city, beating Eastern Suburbs, the Auckland team. So it's going to be Hamilton Wanderers meeting Wellington United in the final of the Kate Shepherd Cup. So congratulations to both teams who will be competing hopefully for that final fingers crossed that can be played in the very near future so just being told actually the game is likely or could be played in hamilton next week but it's not confirmed just yet so fingers crossed that game as i touched on will be able to be played next weekend
She Believes Cup. And, uh, of course, these games going back a week or so now. And, uh, Harry, some work for New Zealand football ferns to do, isn't there, going forward? Yeah, look, uh, I think they would have, um, at least against Iceland, would have um, you know liked to get three points, particularly after the, the games they came on the back of Canada and Korea previously. Um, USA, yeah, look, a, a really difficult one, wasn't it, against uh, against the might and, and the quality that US, USA possess. And then Czech Republic, you know, uh, Yitka, um, Yitka's team or her country of origin against uh, against the Ferns, I'm sure that would have been a very emotional one for her as well. But uh, again, I'm, I'm sure they would have pushed and would have loved to get a result, uh, of three points in that one as well. So uh, a draw out of the three games for, for the Ferns and their build up to what's, again, we talked about the, 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 the number of football or the amount of football we played this year, you know, with World Cup next year as well. Absolutely. And, of course, a slight concern there for New Zealand, not a goal being scored in those three games either, which is a, an issue going forward as well. Yeah, look, and you've got likes of Hannah Wilkinson scoring goals in the A-League for, for Melbourne City. So, um, yeah, look for, for her potentially in, in the next uh, next windows to, to hopefully get on the score sheet. But uh, you are right, uh, Glenn, mm. a bit of a worry time when uh, we're not scoring goals in, in three games. Absolutely. Half time here, of course, in the Chatham Cup. Remember, it's one goal to nil. Let's have a look at the women's Phoenix team, who, of course, have finished their season now. Good win for them in their penultimate game against uh, Western Sydney. Uh, couldn't quite bring it home in that last game uh, against Perth, although Perth, a good side. Uh, unfortunately, New Wellington finishing with the wooden spoon. What did you make, really, of their debut season? And, and I think we have to also acknowledge difficult circumstances yeah, playing absolutely. all of them in Australia, right? Yeah, absolutely. Look, they, they, they did extremely well. I, I think I remember watching that first game when they... I think they, they went ahead in their first game. Um, but obviously throughout the course of the season, I mean, Grace Jarley, I think six goals she called, scored this, this year for, for the Phoenix. Um, they came, you know, they played some nice football towards the end of, of their campaign. You know, unfortunate not to get off the bottom. I know they were pushing that, um, I think it was 3-1 against Western Sydney in their last um, game before they played Perth Glory, looking to push to try and um, improve their goal difference because they knew um, that was going to be a factor. But look, First season, I think it's fantastic. We've got a professional women's side in the uh, in the W League from the Phoenix, um, and looking forward to the season to come. Oh yeah, and hopefully back home next summer, along with the men's team, of course, who of course continue their season for some time yet, and they've been on a good run lately, haven't they? Yeah, they've played some good football too, and I think they've got a couple of games. We'll see in the table in a minute, I'm sure, but um, uh, some good consistent results, and I think some good consistent um, um, you know, play from from the Phoenix, particularly in midfield of like you know, you know Rufa um, and Luis Terio has played as well, has been very good scoring goals. Um, so yeah, look, they've got a lot to do as well. They're just outside the six, as we'll see from the um, uh, from the table. Um, a lot of work to do, but they have got a couple of games in hand as well on um, on those teams above them. So sitting in seventh place, I think there's something like five points between seventh and third at the moment. So they've still got a, a chance to push hard and, and get into that top six. Well, they've got to keep going, don't they? Because you touched on how congested it is at the top of the table. As we can see there, there's still only seven points between them and last place. Uh, however, they are in action again later today. In three hours, in fact, uh, the Phoenix will play Melbourne City in their next match, kicking off at six o'clock on Sky Sport 7. So the 17th round of the A-League. Hopefully no more COVID either. <laughs> And, of course, uh, Miramar and Kashmir both featured in the South Central Series late last year. Of course, that was a good series, wasn't it? We saw goals being scored left, right and centre and some terrific matches uh, involving Miramar and Wellington Olympic in particular, um, including the final, Harry, which was won by Miramar by the amazing score of seven goals to two, wasn't seven it? Seven to two. What an amazing... Yeah, it was, a, I mean, for, for what it was, a truncated season because of COVID and all the rest of it... Um, I, th I think the players and the clubs should have great resolve and resilience to, to continue to play uh, through difficult circumstances and difficult times. And yeah, you're right, the, the, the derby between Olympic and Miramar, particularly in Wellington, I think that kind of that fueled the fire uh, down in Wellington there. Um, and there were some great, you know, some fantastic games, lots of goals um, and, and some, the emergence of some, some, some quality young talent as well. Absolutely. Mason Smith now looking to set up Symes. Olympic get players back. Ollie White, Symes. 
Mata couldn't get a foot in. Bevan tries one, and it's a great save onto the post. And it's in the back of the net on the rebound. Signs gets his first of the season. Oh my goodness me. Four all the last time they met in the regular season. And in the opening eight minutes, it could be two all. Miramar lead at 1-0. There's a great ball for Midgley to chase. Signs in the area. Midgley down to the byline. Who's there in support towards the far post? And Mason Smith has taken a touch. But Miramar have taken the lead back again. While the goals just keep flowing between these two teams. Signs. Overlapping is Mason Smith. Midgley ignores him, uses him as uh, something of a decoy, a deflection, and it's a third for Miramar. Well, Ollie White might claim this. All right, I think there's still more to come. White pulls the trigger. Ollie White, it's snuck in. And Toby Hunt is so disappointed there. He feels he should do better. But Ollie White absolutely now takes the lead in the Golden Boot race. Bevan, still the pressure from Miramar, who rode their luck. Hugo Del Hommel, the Frenchman, has eyes only for goal here. It's a long way out. And, uh, that's why he had eyes on goal. Oh, that is stunning. What a brilliant finish from the Frenchman. Mitchell signs. Oh, Davenport Peterson lashed out. He's a chance now, Mitchley, and they've got a half dozen. Mitchley, the fullback, gets in on the act. And Miramar Rangers are now starting to run away with this grand final. Too good. Here's White still looking for the hat trick. Mason Smith rolling it for Moriera into the area. Moriera, the Portuguese, will have a goal scoring cameo. And it is seventh heaven for Miramar Rangers. Can you believe it? 7 2 in a grand final. And goals to two in that final. Some terrific goals in there as well. Stay with us. We have the second half of the Chatham Cup final coming up in four minutes. It's Cashmere Technical leading by one goal to nil.
Yes, hope you're enjoying the coverage here of the Chatham Cup final here live on Sky Sport Next. Thanks for joining us. Glenn Lama, Harry Nata with the call. Miramar Rangers and Cashmere Technical uh, playing this game. Miramar in the white, Cashmere Technical in the yellow. It's one goal to nil to the Canterbury-based team. Uh, Garbin Coglin getting the penalty at the 41st minute to give his team a 1-0 lead. And they've certainly looked good. The much better of the two teams in the first half. However, they now turn to play with the wind. And Miramar playing with this wind, or into the wind rather, in the second half. And it's going to be interesting to see how both teams now cope with that dynamic, Harry. Yeah, it will be. that. Um, I think playing it playing into the wind is a, is a, is a lot more easy, a lot, more, a lot better actually, particularly if you're keeping the ball on the deck. Uh, it does run a bit true when you're when you're playing against the wind, um, but look, it's a both both it's the same for both sides right at the moment. So they both have to contend with the conditions, um, as you as you said before, Glenn. Uh, Kashmir look, f you know, deservedly in front. I'm even saying they probably deserve a second goal with the way they've played um, against this Miramar side. Is still I think still to find their feet after 45 minutes. We know it's pre-season. We've talked about that at the top of the at the top of the game. But they have got quality, so they need players now to start, um, you know, commanding the game, particularly in the middle middle park with Dua, uh, Dua, and and, and Del Hamel. So second half is underway. No changes to either of the two teams from their starting eleven. Really interesting to see in these first few minutes whether we can see a change of attitude and urgency here from Miramar Rangers. They looked a little sluggish in that first half, not up to their usual high standards that we saw in the South Central series, which of course they won. And we just enjoyed those halftime highlights again against their crosstown rivals, Wellington Olympic. Cashmere Technical are being very good. Tongues having an industrious game. Other players like Richards, Taguchi, Matheson, Coughlin, all looking yeah. really sharp. Yeah, you can't really say there's no one in, in the Cashmere side that's having a, an average game at the moment, can you? They, uh, they're all playing to a, a, a certain game plan. There's a lot more rhythm in their game. They look more cohesive, particularly going forward on this right-hand side behind behind Liam Wood. And, of course, they might play the territory game a bit more and use the strong wind at their backs in the second half. You can see that one there really holding up in the breeze from Ryan Ford, Miramar's keeper. This is Midgley. Mason Smith, nice touch. Symes. Miramar looking good sweeping forward here early in the second half. Here's Zeb. Can he get a shot on target here? Mason Smith still there. Barnett gives it to Mason Smith. And there is the stop from Danny Knight. But Miramar looking good sweeping yeah, forward a, there. A shot on target as well from Sam Mason Smith. A comfortable, comfortable save for, for Danny Knight down to his right, but uh, a good start from from Miramar. Schreiser gives it back to Midgley. O'Brien in position. Enjoying more possession and looking a little bit more productive with it in these first couple of minutes of the second half. So a free kick to Miramar Rangers here. Del Homel to take it. Coming forward here for Miramar. Lots of movement too as Del Homel takes the free kick, but Tung gets rid of it for Cashmere Technical Matheson as well. And now it's nicely under control for the team from Christchurch. Nice 
Knight's ball from Knight out to Luke Tung. Oh, it's fallen for Taguchi. Shrivers wins the ball back nicely for Miramar and continues his run forward. Stora. Taguchi now Mitchell. Boys. Trying to find Taguchi, but it's cut out nicely by O'Brien. Now, Dal Homel spreading it out to the left to Harris Zeb. Well, Zeb's shrugged off his marker there. Here's a chance for Miramar. Zeb, and it's out for a corner. Better play for Miramar Rangers. Yeah, better use of the ball, too, for Miramar. A lot more, more, bit of, bit more of a patient build up more decisive uh, attitude, particularly in their passing, the way they're moving the ball as well. Seems to be a pattern there, trying to get Seb Harris here in behind. You know, Luke Tung. Good pressure from Miramar. There is the corner for Miramar Rangers, but it's straight into the hands of Danny Knight, and that's a good sign if you're a Kashmir technical supporter. Sitting nicely in the club rooms with a beverage right now. <laughs> Still a lot of time to go though, 40 minutes. And that ball's gone all the way back here for Ryan Ford. Oh, it's been... Referee's going to allow play to continue. It was a little untidy at the back. Joe, I think he had a look as well, didn't he, Corey Bryant? <laughs> or Calvin Berg, sorry. The referee. Yeah, it was a nod. A particularly glamorous play, period of play there by Miramar. But anyway, here's Zeb looking to well and truly put that in the past. Dal Homel once again. Ford a little ambitious, wasn't he? Back in his own area. Schwartz gets rid of it for Kashmir. Boys, beautiful win there for. Kashmir technical, great challenge from him to Gucci. Boys, Liches looks to switch the play. Yeah, an awkward one there for Miramar to deal with. Coglin. Oh, nice play. Straight under Wood there. Coglin. Hit the near post. It's hit the post, did it? Or did it hit his shoulder, Ryan Ford's shoulder? Look what he was doing there, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, Ryan Ford with that one. It sort of, it seemed to, to hit him in the arm and then into the post. Oh, well, I suppose that old line comes out. doesn't matter how you stop it. It's if you stop it. That's right. That's some cheeky pay from uh, Coglin as well, wasn't it? Against was Liam it? Wood. Nice little nutmeg. Taguchi, some good play from him. Keeps Kashmir technical. In possession. Boys with that throw in. Good one too to Gucci. Good challenge from Shrivers. I think the referee getting in the way there. And that was clearly done going to advantage the team in gold. So back we cup. Stora with that header. Taguchi in space once more. Just over cooking it there for Richards. Well, we've had eight minutes of the second half now. Interesting to see what shape these players are in when we hit that kind of 70-minute right. yeah, mark, maybe. Yeah, 60 to 70 minutes, I think. We'll start seeing uh, the subs bench clear out, I think, and players be the subs will be starting to warm up. Yeah, I remember this game being played not really at the optimal time of the season. 
with a full winter league season coming up in a few weeks' time. You're looking forward to that one. Glenn, there's a number of new new clubs coming into the comp relevant competitions as well. Takapuna and, and Waiheke United join uh, into the, the Northern League, Havelock North and, and uh, uh, in, in the Central League as well with the Wellington Phoenix coming in there for, for Lower Hutt City. And then in Southern, there's three teams. Your Ferry Mead boys, Mosgill AFC and Nomads United all make up uh, the, the newness in the Southern League. So uh, looking forward to seeing how those teams progress. And of course, the National League will come up at the end of the season again. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't have COVID to deal with. Now there's an opportunity and it's not far away from Sam Mason-Smith. Yeah, it'd be great to have the Auckland teams involved with the National League at the end of this year. But this was better play once again from Miramas Rangers. Signs have been much better yeah, they're since They're getting closer, one. aren't they? Mm. Getting closer. Sam Mason-Smith again had that shot uh, saved to his right from Danny Knight just after uh, half time and then so they have looked the more likely in the second half Miramar I think it's uh, perhaps something to do with a, a team talk at half time perhaps from Scott Hales um, but they do look a lot more lively Coughlin nice ball to tongue there's another good ball a couple of good one touch passes there that one was overcooked for two Richards was the intended target of that one Boys. It's Gucci chasing this one down on Flynn O'Brien, but there's the wind at play there. O'Brien once again. Boys getting left by Midgley there. Good run by Scott Midgley. Oh, didn't quite get enough heat on that cross. Swing back in the path of Harris Zeb there. It would have been a big chance had he yeah. managed to do that. I think he delayed just for a split second because there was no one in the box. I think he was looking to, to smash it across the, the face of the goal there, but uh, no one was making a run. So just delayed and then pulled it back to the edge of the area. Well, boys, late there. That is going to be a card, I think, for Danny Boys. Yes. So Danny Boys, the player, yellow carded in the 56th minute. Yeah, one late. Ooh. And uh, that was a nasty one on Flynn O'Brien, but he seems to be okay. Second yellow card of the game. We saw Sam Dewar, the Miramar captain, carded in the 15th minute. So I wonder which team now. So Dal Homel once more with this free kick. Mason Smith signs up there. You can see Shrivers too. He's on the far left of that shot. Now the tallest players, Del Homo with the free kick. Barnett. And boys this time will gather the ball for Kashmir. Miramar dominating the ball in the second half. Yeah, I'm just just thinking, you know, if, if Kashmir sort of taking the mindset, let's just, you know, let's sit back. We've got to and, and protect our lead, uh, and that's obviously a, a, a quite a uh, an unfortunate phase to fall in because the, the further you, you you push back, the more territory, the more ball you end up Miramar uh, end up getting, and eventually, you know, uh, in, in more t in, in in more ways than one, they'll they'll break you down. They'll get in behind. The position will be largely favouring the, uh, the, the the team in white at the moment. So it's a, it's a, it's important that the particularly in the midfield for for Kashmir where they've done so well in the first half, so they keep putting pressure on the likes of Del Homel and and Dior in the middle of the park for uh, for Miramar. It's great that for from a Kashmir perspective that the likes of 
Um, Barnett haven't had, uh, and Zeb Harris haven't had a lot of the ball because they're both players with pace. Um, so it's just a, a matter of containing Miramar at the moment because there are going to be spells where they're going to have possession, they're going to have a bit of pressure, so they just have to stay organised and, and keep it compact. Barna, good ball. Mason Smith couldn't link up with his front running partner, Nathan Symes, there. Again, a good period of play in possession for the team in white. But, yeah, no, it's a good point you make. It's easy to fall back and... Well, not park the bus, but, yeah, but try play, and protect your lead. Protect yeah. your lead, I think, is a good word. A good term, isn't it? It's hard to get out of that, that mindset. Richards chasing this one through. Ford. Oh, dear. Here's a big chance, surely. 2 0. A howler at the back. And Kashmir Technical double their lead. It is Taguchi who scores the simplest of goals. And it is 2 0. Well, fantastic work from Jacob, uh, Jacob Richards there. But Ryan Ford, too casual. Far too casual. He knows it as well. Scott Hales would not be happy. I mean, they were starting to get some ascendancy on the game as well. We see Joel Moreira um, coming onto the into into the pitch, but uh, yeah, disastrous from from Ryan Ford in that sort of position. Took far too long. Well, Taguchi on the score sheet again. He scored in the 86th minute in the semi-final to give them the win over Western Suburbs, and he's scoring in the. Final to give his team a 2 0 lead. We just got a shot there. Joao Moriera, the former Auckland City and Team Wellington player who is on for Miramar Rangers. And he's going to have to produce something special up front for Miramar Rangers. 23 games in 2021, 16 goals for Joao Moriera. And now Cashmere Technical 2 0 up. And we saw Ryan Ford close to messing up a previous one, didn't we? About five yeah, minutes before. That's, that's right. Far too casual. But you're right. Fair play to Richards, who hustled. Really good hustle. And now real work here for Miramar Rangers ahead. Yeah, they're, now they're going to have to start committing players forward. Miramar, they're going to have to... Yeah, pu push the likes of Zeb Harris forward a lot more. Get him in, into more of a wide, wide area where he can use his pace. More of the ball to players like Owen Barnett and Sam Matham smith as well. I mean, they've looked, looked the better side in, in, the, in, in the first sort of 15 or 20 minutes in the second half. But, you know, a lapse of concentration and, and poor old Ryan Ford won't want to see that one again. No, he certainly won't. But we'll see... If Miramar can put that behind them quickly, they'll need to. That's a great ball from Shrivers. As Zeb and Tung resume their one-on-one -on -one battle again. Zeb's done brilliantly there. Overnight. And Knight looked back very anxiously there to the far post. And thankfully, from his perspective, he couldn't see a white shirt there. But again, you've got Jao Maria who knows how to get on the end of crosses. So Sam Nathan Smith as well is, is, is very competent in the air. So Dahomel with the corner. Overcooked that one. And it will be a goal kick now for Kashmir Technical. Yeah, now it's a base of it's, it's a case now of from, from Kashmir of you know of game management. You know, do they make any subs? Do they put fresh legs? I'm sure they will have fresh legs ready to come on the next sort of between five and ten minutes um, because they know Miramar are going to have to come out and push players forward and put more pressure on them. Well, Taguchi, beautiful control from the Japanese player again. Coglin. He got that first goal in that first half. Beautifully kept in field there by Liam Wood. Zeb has lost the ball. Good challenge coming in from Mitchell. 
And there's a shove in the back there from Liam Wood. More in frustration there on Coglin. Hasn't Taguchi had a superb second half so far? He has, hasn't he? Beautiful. I think he just um, touches. He, he, his awareness is fantastic, I think. Uh, this is the way. I think he always pops up in areas where, where the ball is. I think that particularly the second phase ball, when it gets played forward into, into, into Coglin. He, he's always there or thereabouts. He's always picking up the second ball or the pieces from a from a challenge. So he's fantastic awareness. Tung with that free kick. Oh, Schwartz was lurking there. And Dewar gets rid of it. Pressure's going to remain though on Miramar Rangers goal, will it? Here with Jacob Richards. Double team. Oh, great little ball into Taguchi to, to once more. Matheson. Ford has lost it again, and Coglin's pinched a third. Another goal for Kashmir Technical, and Coglin celebrates once more, and it's looking comfortable now. Well, great ball in from uh, Lyle Matheson, but Ryan Ford again. A goalkeeping error costing Miramar at a, such a crucial part of the game. I mean, two... 2-0 down, they're, they're obviously still in it. You know, they're putting pressure, you can get a goal back. 3-0 down is just a mountain, isn't it, at the moment? And we've still got 25 minutes to go, but 3-0 down, and you've got a keeper that's made two mistakes. Confidence is down, his head is down. It's just an unfortunate set of circumstances for Miramar at the moment. Well, the other thing too is when you're... When you start, your legs start to get heavy too at this time time of the year, Harry, and you're 3-0 up, suddenly you find a bit more juice, don't you? You do. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's always nice to be 3-0 uh, up rather than chasing the game with uh, with three goals in front of you to get at least again but come back into the game. Well, Dan Schwartz, the coach of uh, Cashmere Technical, might be looking at players that he might have substituted now and say, oh, can you give me a five more minutes? Come on, get that adrenaline pumping through your veins. Richards will clear that away. Well, they thoroughly deserve their lead and they've built beautifully into this game. And even though we've seen those two goalkeeping mistakes from Ford, Harry, you've still got to put them, put yeah, the ball in the back of the absolutely. net. Absolutely. You still have to be there, right? You still have to be there, as you said. That final touch into the back of the net. Midgley, this is good play from him. And there's a chance, and it's just wide. That Mori error as well, so you can see the threat that he poses from those sort of areas. He can drift off the shoulder of defenders. Yeah, that one is a, it's a great header from, you know, coming back to head the ball um, down and to the right to get power on the ball like that um, is very difficult to do. Ah, oh, the loneliness of being a keeper. Oh, hopefully he can fight back Ryan Ford after those two mistakes, which have really cost his team. Twenty-three minutes to play. Cashmere Technical with a comfortable lead here in this Chatham Cup final. Looking odds on now, aren't they, to win their third Chatham Cup? Since 2013. Wood gives it back to Shrivers. O'Brien. And boys clears it for Cashmere Technical. Mason Smith leaves it. That's Dewar. It's ricocheted off Stora. And Mitchell desperately trying to get rid of it. <sighs> Sam Dewar has it. Well, another feature of this game so far has been the lack of involvement from Barnett and from Mason Smith. That's right. Just haven't got them into the game at all, Miramar. Taylor Shriver's getting a lot of touches at central. Defending, here he is again. And the 
ball just not getting into the right areas for Miramar in this game. Yeah, they've definitely got the pace to trouble the, the back two, particularly Storer and, and Schwartz in the central defence there. So it's it's how, how do Miramar draw those two out of line to create the space in, in behind? I think that's the that's the Rubik's cube for, for Miramar at the moment. You know, Sam Mathan Smith's had a couple of shots, but you're right. The likes of Owen Barnett and, and Harris Seb have been relatively quiet in the second half. You know, Seb's been up and down that left hand side a couple of times, but yeah. um, yeah, look for Owen Barnett's got to get get more in this game. Get on the get him on the ball. Del Homel pushing a bit further up the pitch, but he's lost it, and Coglin's got it. Very stylish player, isn't he? On the ball, Matheson. Good challenge from O'Brien. Yeah, Mason Smith. Touched on those stats earlier. 27 games last year for Miramar Rangers in all. 22 goals. And he hasn't really looked likely, or hasn't had any opportunities in this game at all. And Coglin just getting tangled up there. And conceding the foul. Again, Miramar. We've got down home. Well, not for the first time having a free kick in this position. I think he'd prefer it just around the edge of the box there. We <laughs> yes. saw that one in the final, didn't we, at half time? How good was that finish? Oh, and he's overcooked that one. Plenty of height on it. It's still there, though. What a yet. I can't get a little look there. And Matheson's going to haul it. But not make too much ground as Miramar looked to get the. Action underway again quickly with time ticking away. Zeb with that touch. And Schwartz gives it back to Zeb. Good ball into Barnett. Wood with that ball. Woody out of the target. Matheson. To Gucci, play on, says referee Berg. And here come the switch over to Richards in space. Another switch, good ball too. To Gucci, oh, he was too clever for himself there. Still has it. Miramar desperately trying to get players behind the ball. That's Matheson. Bit of frustration maybe leaking into Miramar's performance now. This game has not gone their way at all. Moriera. Mason Smith. Moriera is fouled. And there's going to be a yellow card here, and that's going to be shown on Corey Mitchell. Former Waikato and Hamilton Wanderers player. Been in Canterbury now for some time. And there's the foul there. Now, Dal Hamel. About the fourth time we'll have a free kick in that spot in this game. Surely he's going to get this one right, Harry. Thank you from shoot from there, Glenn. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, at the near post. Knight's beaten there, but still there for Dewar. And corner is conceded. Coglin needed to be pretty sharp there. Yeah, they're getting players back behind the ball, aren't they? Cashmere, the staunch defending from 
the team in yellow. Coglin on that, on that part, getting getting back and doing his defensive duties. Well, Midgley is the player. It's just battling a little after that clash. So corner is the decision. Morieta's up. Didn't quite time his jump, but it's come off. I think Schwartz there for another corner. So Miramar will keep these players forward here. They really need a score now, don't they, Harry? They do, yeah. Let's see if they can deliver. Dohamel goes very deep with that corner. Stora can't clear it effectively. Barnett's back for Miramar. And the pressure will stay on here through O'Brien. Oh. O'Brien's got a goal! Holy smoke, that went in! Flynn O'Brien with a stunning goal. I was thinking, what, what are you doing, O'Brien? Shooting from there. <laughs> Go and have another shot, my friend. What a fantastic goal. Well, everyone just stood around and watched, didn't they? Look at that. And it dipped in it at the end as well. What a fantastic strike from the central defender. Well, he doesn't get many goals, Flynn O'Brien. Didn't get any last year. But he's got one today that perhaps gives Mirabar Rangers a slight sniff in this Chatham Cup final. Still a lot of work to do for them over these next 15 minutes. Yeah, at least it might give them a little bit of confidence now. Yeah, it might force Dan Schwartz into a substitute potentially, you know, just to shore up the back, get some fresh legs on. You know, those changes can be disruptive, particularly if you've got some momentum. And Mirabar definitely have that at now with a, with a goal. To get them, try and get them back into the game now with a second goal would be great. Well, we'd have a grandstand finish, wouldn't we? Mason Smith, now Morieta. Switches it out over to the left, but that's not a good ball from the experienced Joao Morieta. It's come off wood, so it's more possession for Kashmir Technical. Richards, Zeb has won it back for well, they're going to go back to that original decision by well, that was allowed to continue Coglin it was with that original foul Richards gets himself in the road again Coglin now he has been fouled. It's the good players get themselves in good positions, don't they, Harry? And there's an, a prime example of just yeah. Coglin just getting himself into a position where clip the heels, wins like, a free kick. It's definitely an awareness thing, right, Glenn? I think using your body, knowing where the player is behind you, you know, the vicinity of the ball, you just get your body, even if it's just a one or two yards, half a yard, just to get yourself in front of the defender. And you, and, you, and you kind of entice or invite the defender to, to foul you, basically. Um, and this is good for Kashmir Technical. It's up some minutes. Uh, yeah. It just gives a bit of time for the players to get their breath back a little bit and slows the game down, gives them a chance to just get their composure back. That's right, get their shape, you know, get players back. I'm sure Storer and, uh, and, and Schwartz at the back will be, you know, let's just, let's just keep it tight, 15 minutes to go. You know, we can't let them back in the game. You know, another goal for Miramar and, and, it, and it's all on. You know, it's the last five or six minutes will be helter-skelter, I'm sure of that. So, um, you know, Kashmir will be looking just to, I, I think, just looking to keep their shape and potentially start keeping the ball. Let's start stretching Miramar. Let's start getting players wide, um, making it difficult for them. Shrivers. Well, <laughs> was very close to Matheson getting that one. But Miramar now have a chance to build from the back. Wood. Symes with that touch, couldn't do a duer it was, couldn't quite link up there. 
And now Richards can chase this one down, but Shrivers is back. Nice ball from Taylor Shrivers. Now Liam Wood. Jewish header is taken away, and again, Kashmir Technical happy to play the territory game. It's Taguchi goes near post with a terrific strike. It's a corner. So that's a fantastic strike from uh, from yeah, Taguchi. Difficult angle on the bounce, on the volley. Didn't have much of the goal to aim at as well. It looked like it was on target. Need to force uh, Ryan Ford into a save. Well, Dan Schwartz still not making any substitutes says Taguchi takes this corner. Oh, Ford's lost it again. And it is Coughlin who's going to not get that one on target. Well, a few heartbeats. Hart was racing that faster there than Ford again. There's a strategy on set pieces from Kashmir. Right? It's just, just put it on the goalkeeper. <laughs> Schwartz gets rid of it for Kashmir Technical. They seem to be happy, just soaking up time, giving the ball back to Miramar now, deep in their own half. We'll see if that tactic pays off, and Tung nice and composed back to Danny Knight. Well, the first substitute seems to be getting ready to come on for Kashmir Technical. Looks like Declan Tyndall is going to come on. Taguchi again nicely worked there from Taguchi to, to win the free kick. Yeah, it's a smart foul too, or a smart uh, piece of play from Taguchi just to, again using his body, inviting the, 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 the challenge coming through and from the defender, winning himself a free kick, eating up a few minutes and now a substitution for, for Kashmir Tech. Uh, Declan Tyndall is going to come on here, the 20-year-old, wearing 21. And he comes on for Jake Richards. So Richards is off. Really good game from him, Harry. Yeah, look, he had fantastic first half. I mean, a couple of chances, a couple of shots on goal as well. But, uh, you know, it's been an integral part. Of that Kashmir, particularly in the first half, like I said. But uh, worked so hard in the second half as well. There's always going to be changes in this game from both sides. Well, Tyndall, here he is on the ball here. He started all five games that Kashmir Technical did, well, that played in the South Central Series. So Tyndall got some experience behind him. All seven games, too, in the Southern League last year. So good to see, or well, good for Kashmir to bring on a player who's well used to playing at this level last year. Here's a nice move from Midgley. Got rid of Danny Boys. Midgley really putting the clappers on, and he's won a corner. Good work from Scott Midgley. Here's Del Hamel, who really, really need to keep pressing here, not waste any seconds. It's a good corner coming in. It's very close. Knight's got it. Well, that could have easily gone in. Maybe it's Kashmir's day. <laughs> yeah, those ones are difficult, right? The body's everywhere. The ball's like the pinball, you know, a game of pinball across from player to player. Well, Sam Mason-Smith was right there too. On another day, he could have just nudged it in. If it was slightly wider, but it wasn't a B. Here's Mason Smith. On the ball right now. Looking to provide up front here, and he's found Zeb with a good ball. What he had it just ahead of him. Zeb again, but it's not going to fall for a player from Miramar. Another substitute about to be made for Miramar Rangers, and coming on is Max Falconer. Wearing 13, and Sam Dewar, the captain, is coming off. So Max Falconer got a couple of games, both as a sub in the South Central Series. Young player coming on here in the Chatham Cup final. Didn't play in the Central League last year for this team, but did make one appearance in round three of the Chatham Cup. So he's on there now, and Moriera in possession. 
Good ball to Zeb again, who's looking dangerous down this left flank. It's still there, and it's oh. in. It's gone in. No goal, hang on. So, looks like there could be an offside play. No, it is a corner, isn't it? Oh, so, what's been ruled there? Yes, it's gone over the byline there, Harry. Well, I don't know about that. That'll be interesting to have a look at See, them on the replay. It's a, it's a big call from the... Referee's assistant on the other side. We couldn't see it from that from that uh, that shot. Here's the corner, and Knights not got the ball. It's gone in anyway. Well, it's a goal mouth scramble. It was messy, but it doesn't matter how it goes in. And it's a second goal for Miramar Rangers. Who got that? Who knows? But it's three-two. Oh, I'm sure they won't care at the moment. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. This is from, yeah, definitely the ball had gone out. There's no doubt about that. It's a gr fan, correct decision from Calvin Berg. Well, that's the goal that was disallowed by Sam Mason Smith. So we'll get confirmation of that goal scorer from Freddie Young, our man, in just a moment on the sideline. Here comes Cashmere Technical, though. With five minutes to play, great ball to Matheson. Matheson, oh, oh. most close to great. another goal for Coglin. That would have been a hat-trick. Yeah, great defending, I think it was from Flynn O'Brien as well on Coglin. Well, he got the first goal, didn't he, O'Brien? And he saved one there, arguably. Well, it's game on with five minutes to play. As Liam Wood plays that one forward. Tung just playing the territory game. Gets rid of it. Morietta playing deep in the pitch. Good ball this time. Midgley made a good run. But he's double teamed over there. Here's Miramar coming forward. This is Barnett. Oh, just overcooked that pass, didn't he? Still there. And it's going to be a goal kick. Well, if Shrivers had just yeah. found that player, it was all on for a third goal, wasn't it? Come on, Jack. Keep up. Come on. Keep it going. Well, nervous times for Kashmir Technical. How often do we see this in football, Harry? A team that's been leading just starts to get a little nervous in these last few minutes. That's right. You know, that, that goal from uh, Sam Mason, I think it was Sam Mason Smith earlier on. Really started to put some pressure on... Uh, on Kashmir Technical now, and that man there, I think, is, would be very grateful. Now they've a few minutes to go. They've, they've pulled two goals back. That's oh, game on. Stora. Tyndall gives it to Coglin, and the wind's going to take that one out. Well, one in midfield again. Nice ball. Here's Tyndall, the substitute. Well, he's double teamed over there, but he's done really well there, Tyndall. And is that going to be a goal kick? It will be a goal kick. Seb couldn't keep that in field of play. So Tung with two minutes to play. There will be some added time, of course. But 
potential. Four minutes of added time, so there's still a bit of football to be played, Harry. Here's Matheson. Oh, lovely play. Here's Taguchi. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. Well, he deserves a goal. What a fantastic goal from uh, Yuya Taguchi for his second goal of the afternoon. But some awesome work, some fantastic lead up work from, from Lyle Matheson. Drew three players in there. Taguchi all on his own. And he passed that one in the back of the net. What a fantastic finish. Well, how good have Matheson and Taguchi been in combination today? I think yeah, Matheson was a bit quiet in the second half. I think he was, you know, he had some good touches and, and got down that left-hand side quite a bit in the first half. But he has been relatively quiet. But, you know, I mean, quality of quality of players, you pop up and you draw three defenders and you just pop a pass into someone like Taguchi, composed. And you just pass that one into the back of the net. Well, that should make the game safe now with the 90-minute mark now pending. But we've seen crazy things happen on a football pitch before. Shrivers goes long this time. Well, we've seen... Well, we'll remember that four-all draw between Wellington Olympic and... Miramar last year in the South Central Series, Harry. Didn't we get about four oh, yeah. goals in the last five minutes That's for that right. game? <laughs> it was a seesaw battle, that one, wasn't it? it must have been tit for tat, they were. Well, Tyndall. Chick, chick, one. Working away on F Falconer. Coglin. Happy to just bang it down the oh, pitch. Four minutes to play in this game. Four minutes of added time. Falconer. I need a goal now. The life's dependent on him here in this Chatham Cup final. Max Falconer once again. Good ball. This is nice play. This is Barnett. Knight with the stop at the near post. Barnett still has it. And Cashmere can clear. And the throw-in's been given to Miramar. She holds it like that. I've got, I've got, I've got a piece of rock on it. Well, that's not the end of the pitch that the ball needs to be if you're a Miramar Rangers fan. Wood. Zeb. Liam Wood lofts that one beautifully to Joao Moriera. Now Zeb, who's in the centre though? Wood again. Falconer. Good six or seven players behind the ball though there for Kashmir Technical. A lot of traffic for Miramar to navigate their way through. Barnett. And it looks like the free kick might go against him. Happy days for Kashmir Technical. Who's moments away from their third Chatham Cup victory in their history. Well, Danny Boys with this throw-in. Nice throw too, it was to Coughlin. Now yeah, that might have come off Shrivers for a corner. It has. And there won't be any hurry taking this one. Well, there's been some terrific performances from Kashmir Technical. I think what you said just after half-time, no one really had a bad first half. I think the same for the second half too, Harry. And they're just going to hold it in the corner here. Coglin was hoping for a ricochet out for another corner, but not to be. Matheson.
foul there. And it's going to be a free kick for Miramar Rangers. Oh, Scott Midgley, number two there. He's done an awful lot of running today. Got a couple of subs being made there by Kashmir Technical. Number 34 is on. That's Alex Ballard. And out of the game comes Taguchi. What a game he's had. Two goals. A very big influence on the game, the Japanese player. Yeah, look, he's, he's quality, isn't he? I think he's uh, showed that with, uh, with Canterbury um, in previous seasons. Two goals. And, and look competent, like I said, he's sort of that play has drifted him, played that in that number ten role. He's picked up second phase ball. He's been he's been composed. Like you know, when you when Taguchi's got the ball, you're going to keep, but more than less retain possession. So, you know, I think he's definitely a, a, a nomination for that uh, Jack Batty Trophy for Player of the Day. Well, let's see. Oh, lovely touch from Moriera. And hang on, there was a whistle just before, and there was some. Off the ball incident from Miramar Rangers there. What a shame that. Offside, in fact. What a shame that was really building nicely. Lovely touch there from Moriera. So we're almost done here at Porirua, Jerry Collins Stadium. Here is a good play coming here from Donkers, who's on the field as well for Kashmir Technical, and that time four does affect a good stop. Kian Donkers, the 17-year-old. Fancy scoring in the Chatham Cup final at 17. <laughs> he was that close. Yeah, nice save too from Ryan Ford. Got down well, used to spread his legs well to deflect that, ball, that shot from Donkers. And there it is, Kashmir Technical have won the Chatham Cup. Third time they've won it since 2013, and they thoroughly deserve it as well. That man there was influential, number 10, Coglin. He got two goals. And Taguchi, the Japanese player, getting the other two. And the Chatham Cup is heading to Christchurch. It's Kashmir Technical 4, Miramar Rangers 2. And they thoroughly deserve it, Harry, don't they? Yeah, absolutely, Glenn. No, no arguments from me. I mean, they certainly put the pressure on Miramar in that opening of 15 or 20 minutes, and they deserve their, their lead at half-time as well. But, um, you know, you have to say, you can't keep quality down. They have got some quality players in that, that Miramar side. Pulled a couple of goals back, but unfortunately had a couple of errors from, uh, from their young keeper and, and Ryan Ford that... Uh, that really put it beyond them, I think, and uh, it rounded off with the, a couple of goals from Taguchi and, and the Jack Batty trophy, deservedly so. Absolutely. And it's the third time Kashmir Technical have won the Chatham Cup in nine years, and Danny Knight and Dan Schwartz and Tom Schwartz have been involved with all three of them now, which is a great effort, isn't it, for those three gentlemen in particular? Yeah, look, I, I, I think they've, you know, they've only been in existence, I think, since 2012 as well from memory uh, between uh, Kashmir and Wollstone uh, Technical, two, two um, it's club sides within the Canterbury area sort of coming together. Um, Kashmir Technical was born and this is their third Chatham Cup triumph, so a fantastic result for a relatively young club. And some terrific performances all the way through the team. You see Corey Mitchell and Luke Tung celebrating there. That was They had good games. In fact, we go through this entire 11 Starting around the couple of substitutes, gave some energy as well. It was a really good effort from all of their players. So really good effort from Kashmir Technical by four goals to two. Time now for some reaction. Let's head down to Fred de Jong, who's got the Miramar captain with him, Sam Dua. Well, commiseration, Sam, but it was a game that almost, almost set the tone in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, both teams came at it and trying to get a stranglehold of the game and I think first half they really put it to us and really put us under a lot of pressure and we just couldn't get in the game but second half like we did but too little too late you could say. 
you win a goal down and uh, what was said at half time to try and get yourself back into it? Pretty much just wake up and get, get into the game, stop, stop, you know, fanning about and win your tackles and really stand up and to be in, in a grand final, which we didn't in the first half. And then obviously because the 3-0 down, the game's almost dead and buried and then uh, you got yourselves back with a, with a lifeline, two, two goals and uh, just couldn't, just n never really looked as dangerous as you have in the past. Yeah, yeah Miramar obviously never gave up, so full credit to us there, but you know, full credit to Kashmir as well. They, they defended well, they are a solid team and they really concede and yeah, I, I thought they played really well. Well, hi luck, mate. Cheers, mate. Well, Sam Dewar there, disappointing. Always to hear from the, the captain that doesn't win. And, and an honest assessment as well. They mm. weren't in the game in the first half. Kashmir Technical deservedly went into that, that sec, that's into the second half, 1-0 one one advantage. But, you know, they, to their credit, they came back into the game in the second half, but it, it just they just couldn't get it across the line. Well, it is uh, a happy team, that one, isn't it? Kashmir Technical, and there'll be none happier than the captain, Tom Schwartz. He's with Fred. Well, Tom, fantastic performance from the team. What does it What does it mean to you to win the Chatham Cup as captain? Yeah, it means a lot. We're a, we're a proud club. Uh, we've only been about for for ten years, um, but the Chatham Cup is one that we always look to, always look to do well in. And um, yeah, really, really proud to to be captain to um, lead these boys. You guys came out and just absolutely blitzed it for about the first thirty minutes. You know, you were continually getting in behind and looking extremely dangerous. Yeah, we knew if we got our shape right today, um, we've got some some dangerous players on the on the counter-attack. Um, they produced us a bit of magic and they definitely did that today. Um, us lads at the back just kept it nice and solid, um, other than a little bit of a blip late on. Um, but yeah, we, we did well today. You're exactly right. I mean, Coughlin and Taguchi will get all the plaudits, but I mean, as a as a solid unit at the back, the back uh, the back four and the defensive midfield just really didn't, didn't offer Miramar anything today. No, it took a, a, a pretty special goal to... Um, to reduce the reduce the game there from from their centre off, um, but yeah, we're we're proud of defending well, proud of getting in a good shape, set, setting up well, um, and yeah, you get your rewards if if you do that right. All the best, mate. Go and uh, pick up a trophy. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Well, Tom Schwartz there, very captain, a very happy captain, the winning captain of the Kashmir Technical Team. So Miramar Rangers will be back in action shortly. The Central League. There they are. The winning team, Catch Me Technical. Not a bad effort. Mainland football champions, Southern League champions last year, third place in the South Central Series, and now the Chatham Cup winners for 2021. Good football side and thoroughly deserved the win today. As we're standing by now for the presentation. of the Chatham Cup for 2021. Uh, so Joel Batty standing by. And, uh, welcome to the official and we're on now for the presentation. The 2021 New Zealand Football Chatham Cup. Cup. It's my pleasure to introduce to you New Zealand Football Executive Committee member Richard Kerbell, New Zealand Football Competitions and Events Director Kevin Ford, and John Batty, son of three time medalist and crew member of the HMS Chatham, Jack Batty. New Zealand Football would like to acknowledge all of the teams involved in the Chatham Cup for 2021 and thank them for their commitment to, this, to completing this historic competition during what has undoubtedly been a very challenging year for club competition in New Zealand. Although we couldn't host a full crowd at Jerry Collins Stadium, 
Thank you to everyone that's tuned in to watch this 94th edition of the Chatham Cup Final, with special thanks to our partners at Sky Sport who have made today possible. Moving straight to the awards, we're going to start with the presentation of the Jack Batty Memorial Cup. This goes to the most valuable player of today's final and is presented yeah, by Jack Batty's yeah, son, John. With the Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. Joining the esteemed list of footballers to have won this award, the winner for the Jack Batty Memorial Cup is Kashmir Technicals, Yuya Taguchi. We know that no match is possible without match officials, so we would like to take this opportunity to present commemorative medals to today's referees. Our thanks to match referee Calvin Berg, assistant referees Ashton Davenport and Cameron Grusho, and fourth official Chris Bennett. Thank you, match officials. Please now join us in welcoming the runners-up of the 2021 Chatham Cup Miramar Rangers, led by Captain Sam Dewar. Rangers are now also presented with the Bob Smith Memorial Trophy by New Zealand Football Competitions and Events Director Kevin Ford. I'd now like to invite um, the winners of the 2021 Chatham Cup, Kashmir Technical, to come and collect their medals.
Finally, I'll now ask New Zealand Football Executive Committee member Richard Kerbell to hand over the trophy to Cashmere Ka Technicals Captain Tom Schwartz. Please join us in congratulating your 2021 Chatham Cup winners, Cashmere Technical. Well, there they are, Cashmere Technical, deserved winners of the Chatham Cup. No drink in there yet, Harry, but it won't be I'm too sure. long before it gets in there, won't it? I'm sure they'll be a little bit disappointed there's nothing in there just yet, but I'm sure there will be. You're, you're absolutely right. Well, but Danny Knight gets that trophy for the third time. So too does Tom Schwartz. And three trophies in nine years is pretty decent, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. And what a start to the... You know, to, to, to the season in about three weeks' time for Cashmere Tech already, you know, championship winners, Chatham Cup winners at the moment. So um, that'll take give them some momentum and some confidence going into the coming season. Fantastic result. Well, there we are. Congratulations to Yuya Taguchi for winning player of the match as well. He got two goals. Coglin got the other two for Cashmere Technical. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we'll catch you again for more football soon. Cashmere Technical winning the Chatham Cup for 2021. Four goals to two over Miramar Rangers.